Okay, hi everybody. So this uh, particular painting is going to be dedicated to my sister. Her birthday is tomorrow, April 20th. Um, I call her my hummingbird because she can't sit still through anything. Not for very long anyway. And so kind of a running joke for me. Anyway, um, her favorite colors are periwinkle and yellow. So I tried my best to come up with a periwinkle blue. I think I did okay. Um, and I hope I got the consistency right. This is actually a take two. Um, and this is the yellow. It's a really just a light pale yellow that I'll be using. And I really wanted something for contrast. So I picked two contrast colors. The first one is one I just kind of mixed up. And it's a dark glossy purple blue. And it's got PVA, which is actually Elmer's glue and um, water and then I added a couple of drops of hair oil because I've been experimenting with different types of stuff uh, instead of silicone. So I've got hair oil or auto lubricant. Um, this is the other contrast color which is kind of like a really pretty uh, glossy antique copper and it almost has like when the light hits it like this iridescent like this blue iridescence to it. I don't know if you can see it but it's just absolutely gorgeous. Can you see that? Anyway, so those are my two contrast colors and hopefully it will turn out correct. I'm using uh, Craft Smart paints mostly. Um, and then I have this one which is folk art. This is antique copper. And the Craft Smart is grape taffy and light yellow. Sorry, if I can get it to focus on the center of the screen here. And a pale blue. And for the periwinkle, I just took mostly the pale blue. And I kind of mixed four or five drops of the um, grape taffy in there. Now, my pouring medium is a recipe I got off of YouTube. And this is my pouring medium. And I filled three quarters of this bottle with PVA, which, again, is the Elmer's glue. And um, a quarter of that with water. And then um, at that point, you want to just mix it up and get it to a good consistency. If you have a chance to look at any kind of other pouring mediums, you can look at uh, what their consistency is. And it's actually kind of, it's more watery than I expected. So anyway, okay, on to the painting. Let's get my handy dandy gloves on which are actually just, you know, old gloves from a hair dye kit. Some extra ones that I had. So they'll work, hopefully, just Peachy King. And I'm going to do a Dirty Pour Flip Cup, um, which is um, a style, again, I learned from YouTube. And that's where you pour all the colors into a cup, and then you flip it over on the canvas. Um, and so let's go ahead and get started. Let's move my pouring medium back out of the way. I'm also gonna be using um, some white, which this one actually has the Liquitex pouring medium in it. Um, I was experimenting with that and a little bit of water for consistency. And this one has no auto lubricant or cooking oil or hair oil, or anything in it. So there's no any, no, uh, silicone type substances in it. So I did the same thing with my black. Um, I didn't put any kind of silicone type substance in it. Um, I think actually I'm going to start with a little bit of the copper. I did add a little bit of glitter gold because if I remember correctly my sister likes things that are shiny. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And again, hopefully I got this to the right consistency because my last one was kind of a bust. All right, and I wanna try and keep the yellow as far away from the uh, copper as possible because I think that's what made it come out so swampy green last time. I'm not sure. And I really want a lot of this uh, periwinkle blue to come through. And here is the dark, glossy purple blue. Then get it to come out. 
I'm, I use, I reuse stuff. I'm a recycler. So, um, I, if you couldn't tell, this is an old glue bottle that I mixed a color in. Um, this one that I have my magenta color in is the old Liquitex bottle. Um, so I, I recycle stuff. I reuse. Hopefully that will, uh, come in handy. Okay. And this is the white. You can kind of already see some cells and I really want to keep this as light as possible. My sister's always kind of reminded me of summer, you know, springtime, stuff like that. She's just got that mentality, that, um, aura about her. So I'm not going to add any more of the copper because I've learned from watching YouTube videos like mixed media girl. She's actually one of the inspirations for me starting to do this. Um, that the coppery colors can kind of take over. So I'm going to add some more of the periwinkle blue because like I said, I really want that to come through. And I will probably add a little bit more of that glossy purple blue, but not too much. Okay, I think I've used as much of that as I can. And here's a little bit more of the blue, not too much. Got a lot of paint. Oh, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't look like it, but there's actually kind of a lot of paint in this uh, cup. I've noticed, like this is an eight by 10 canvas. It probably does not look like it's eight by 10. So we're going to go ahead, since I didn't use, make very much of it, we're going to go ahead and use the rest of the yellow. Because like I said, those are her two favorite colors. So periwinkle and yellow. And I really want to emphasize that. So, okay. That actually looks really cool in the cup. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if you can see that. That looks cool. I hope it comes out something like that on the canvas. We shall see. All right. Hopefully I got that balance okay. All right, so let's set this aside and put canvas on top of the cup like so. I know I don't have this in perfect frame, but and then we'll flip it and then set it back down and kind of let everything fall. That was another thing that I've kind of learned from um, watching the YouTube videos is letting stuff kind of settle towards the canvas kind of will help um, make sure that all of your colors like from the copper down will come in. So anyway. Let's see what happens. It's already kind of leaking out the side. Really hope this turned out good. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Another thing I learned from watching the YouTube videos is making sure your corners all get as much coverage as possible. YouTube can be very informational from time to time. All right. So, oh, the inside of that cup looks so cool. Look at that. Hopefully, the painting will look just as cool. I'd like to be able to send my sister something that she would really actually like. That so Her walls are covered with pictures, so I'm hoping that this might be something that she would want to hang up. Oh my gosh, and there's already cells popping up. Can you see that? That is so cool. I'm excited. I'm super excited. Okay. Let's tilt it. This is usually the part where I mess up. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Maybe if I slow myself down. Like some people like to say, slow your roll, Amanda. 
Excuse my sniffles, allergy season. This one is turning out way cooler than the other one. Way, way cooler. Oh, I hope I don't lose all these cells. And I really don't want to tilt it too fast because then the colors will kind of mix and I don't want it to get all muddy like the other one did. But as of right now, it is actually turning out to be really cool. So far, so good. I want some more of that blue to kind of pop out. And I definitely want to keep some of that yellow on there. Let's see if we can stretch it out a little bit. Okay. A little bit more this way. Gonna cover this corner a little bit. Okay. This one turned out way cooler than the other one. Way cooler. Like I'm really excited about this one. And make sure that all the sides are covered. I have paint left over from my other pour and I don't really want to mix it up with this one. So I gotta be careful when I'm getting any of the wax paper underneath. Okay, so got all my sides covered, I think. And I think I did the consistency a lot better this time. I think that's why more of the cells are coming up and like um, right here, it looks like more of the copper will be popping up through and that yellow is really coming through beautifully. So I'm going to let it sit here for a couple minutes and we'll see what happens. And then like the other YouTube videos, I'll go in for a close up. Okay. So hold that thought. Okay. So, um, it hasn't quite been 10 minutes, but since I don't have a torch, I've been using this hair dryer, and it's just a Windermere uh, Pro Sport 1250. It's just an old hair dryer. Um, you know, don't get it wet. Anyway, um, and I hold it, uh, I'd say about 10 inches above the um, canvas, and you really kind of have to judge. Sometimes you need to hold it up further. Sometimes, you know, you can hold it closer, but it helps with the development of cells. I also learned this off of YouTube if you don't have a torch. And since I don't have a torch, then that's what we did. So I wanted to kind of show you what's happening real quick. And we'll start in the bottom right corner. And there's so many cells that are popping up. And Sister dear, I really hope that you like this painting because I'm excited about it. it. Turned out way better than the first one. Um, and you can do so many things with it. Backgrounds for collage, or you can just hang it like this. I don't know <laughs> what your preference is, or as Dad used to say, what your druthers is. And you can kind of see the gloss showing through from the glitter and the antique copper. And see, there, it's almost like it veins through it. Those cells are like cells within cells. <laughs> However stupid that might sound, but like for real, like tree rings. See if I can get that to focus. Sort of. But anyway, so 
that is her painting. So happy birthday, hummingbird. I really hope that you liked this. There we go. I'm still working on the whole focusing thing and learning how to do these recordings and stuff, but um, I hope you guys liked it and uh, maybe comments or anything on if I can be more informational or anything like that. Any suggestions or advice would be very welcome. So thanks for watching.